What's up guys, it's Luke SYC here. This is a tutorial video on how to differentiate sine x using the uh, <coughs> first principle. First of all, I'll just go through some of the basics uh, on my whiteboard here in front of me. What you'd need to do uh, if you wanted to learn how to differentiate sine x and other trigonometric functions using the first principle. Alright, as you can see, if we let y equals f of x and remembering if the function of x is equal to sine x, the differential, which is over here, the dy by dx is equal to the limit with the change in x tending to zero with the function of f of x plus the change in x minus the function of x over the change in x is equal to the differential. Now, this must all seem very confusing to look at uh, on a whiteboard and such, but we can really break it down and make more sense of it in a second. So, but let me clear that up and we'll have a look at it again. Right, now to simplify this further, we're looking at a y equals x squared graph here, just a simple one, um, where we're only counting or we're only encountering the uh, zero and all of the positive integers. Okay, so. As you can see, there are two points marked on the quadratic. So we have a point P and point Q, both with coordinates x, y, x plus dx, y plus dy, respectively. Now, if you wanted to find the gradient or the gradient of the line connecting the two points, all you'd need to really do is find the difference in the y coordinate over the difference in the x coordinate. Now, this would simply just give you dy over dx. Now, this is pretty standard. So, how else could we find that? Well, by substituting the x coordinates into the function y equals x squared, we can see what we can get from that point. So, having a look over here. So, if we say that the x coordinate is x plus dx and the y coordinate is y plus dy, we are essentially saying that y plus dy is equal to x plus dx all squared if you encounter or use this function here. Now, if we have a look at this further, we can then see what the simplified version is if we want to make it look in the form of dy by dx. All right, by continuing with our expression, y plus dy equals x plus dx all squared, we to scroll down a little bit, we can just see us working through expanding out the brackets and simplifying where necessary. Now, once we go down, we must realize that because the x squared isn't cancelled, we can substitute y is equal to x squared, because it is, if true, y equals x squared. And if we do that, we end up with x squared plus dy equals x squared plus 2x dx plus dx all squared. Now, by simplifying that further to find out dy by dx, we are given the expression 2x dx plus dx squared over dx. Now, if we scroll down a little bit, we will see that dy by dx simplifies to 2x plus dx. Now, that expression there, dy by dx is equal to 2x plus dx, is correct for the gradient of the line connecting p to q, or the tangent connecting p to q. Now, if the change in x is very, very small, say for instance zero, so we're pretty much talking about the point P, uh, the point P, the gradient of point P on the curve, we would say that the gradient is calculated by dy by dx is equal to 2x plus zero, which is the change in x, so the gradient can simply be found out by finding the x point of P and substituting that into dy by dx. That's pretty simple to find the gradient of a point on a curve, and also to find the gradient of a tangent, or sorry, a line connecting two points using the first principles. However, with learning this, we can also expand upon it and find out an expression that can be used, or, you know, a formula that can be used for all of the expressions, even including trigonometric functions, which is what we're going to be looking at with sine x. I'll just rub, it, well, uh, I'll just rub all this out, and then we'll continue with that in a second. All right, so now looking at the uh, general expression, or sorry, the general formula for the dy by dx, so the gradient or the, you know, the rate of change, it's 
complicated form is written as such, so the f of x plus dx minus f of x over x minus x plus dx. Now, that seems very, very confusing. Now, imagine it being written as the change in y, so the change in the y value in the function, so this subtracted by this, over the change in x value. This simply looks like this. So the second y value, the greater value, subtracted by the first y value over the x, the second x value minus the first x value. And that should indeed give you the gradient of the tangent for, at the two point, for connecting the two points together. Now, if the limit, say, at a point, limit tends to zero, so the rate of change dx is zero, all we would simply have is another equation like so. Now this equation, dy by dx equals 2x plus dx, is of course what we had here earlier, where our expression y equals x squared was substituted very nicely and simplified all the way down here. Now going back to this general formula of what we've used, if we want to find the gradient at the point, at the point P, all we'd simply need to do is make the change in x value equal to zero. So as the x coordinate, or as the x value attends to zero, we, we, we write that simply as lim, and underneath that it would have dx with an arrow pointing towards zero. So if I just form, formalize that and uh, show it just in the bottom in red. And this is what you should end up with with the dy by dx is equal to the limit of dx tending to zero, f of x plus dx minus f of x over dx. Remembering that this, this little part here, this little part isn't multiplying by this uh, fraction here. That is just the general formula you use if you want to find the gradient of the tangent at a point when the change in x value is zero. That is just a very formal version of what I had shown earlier of dy by dx, but it's also quite necessary if you want to understand calculus further. All right then, so with this in mind, we are going to move into a bit more of a complicated situation where we're actually going to be looking at trigonometric functions. The first one we're going to be looking at in this video is uh, sine x, and using this formula in a very basic manner to find the gradient at a point and hopefully go through a few more examples just to expand on what we already learnt in this tutorial. Okay, so in the situation where the function of x is equal to sine x, it's easy to say that the function of x plus dx is equal to sine x plus dx. Now, if we look down just a second, the derivative of x dy by dx can be expressed in the form like so. This is the equation what we had beforehand and the general formula if you're differentiating using first principles. Now, if we look over here, this is what it looks like if you were to substitute f of x, or f of x plus dx. Now, you can't really do a lot with that, and um, to find the dy by dx in general terms would, you, would really have to be expressed differently. So, what we're going to be looking at is remembering that the identity, so sine c minus sine d is equal to 2 cos c plus d over 2 times sine c over, sorry, c minus d over 2. Now, what happens when we substitute this identity into this expression here? If I just clear the board and I'll show you that. Okay, so simplifying this further, using the c is equal to x plus dx and d equals x, if we substitute it into the identity <clears throat> it'll look slightly similar to this, so sine x plus dx minus sine x is equal to 2 cos etc etc. Now if we simplify that further to find out what dy by dx is equal to, we'll find that it is equal to that, 2 cos x plus dx over 2 times sine dx over 2 over dx. Now that looks really, really, really horrible to interpret. Well, of course, 
bearing in mind with the limit of dx tending to zero, we'll look at each part of the expression differently. So we'll look at 2 cos x plus dx over 2 and separately 2 sine dx over 2 as dx tends to zero. Now, if I rub this out and I'll express what each part of the formula demonstrates. Okay, so this is the form it shall be expressed in, dy by dx. Complicated? Not really. Let's have a look at this section over here, where we've got sine of dx over 2 over dx over 2 is equal to 1 when dx tends to 0. Now, let's just imagine this written as sine x over x, where dx and a half aren't really relevant to the question. If you were to sketch a graph and you were to look at a few different values of x and you looked at the different values for sine x when you you had applied these numbers. So we'll start off with x equals 1. When you put x equals 1 into sine x you get 0 0.84 to two significant figures. Now if you were to put that the x value into sine x over x you more or less get the same value. Now Going down, if we decrease the value of x tending to 0, as the limit suggests, sine x gets smaller and sine x over x tends to 1. Now, this can help us write the expression above in an alternative form so that we're able to, able to calculate this. So all we would usually do is bring this 2, this 2 here, down into the denominator over this side, so dx over 2. So the sine of dx over 2 over dx over 2 is equal to 1 when dx tends to 0. And this is true if we look at this value here. So, in essence, that is just a, well, more or less a value, a scalar value of 1. So this will be multiplied by this with 1. Now, this bit is nice and easy. So, looking at the limit of dx tending to 0, if we put 0 into this cos x plus dx over 2, we end with cos x. Now, looking at the bigger picture, the differential of sine x is simply 1 times cosine x. And that can easily be written as dy by dx is equal to cos x, which is indeed true for the differential of sine x. Now, that's pretty much it with using differentiation with first principles for one trigonometric function, sine x. But this can be applied to many, many, many different types of trigonometric functions, and you know, some that are more advanced than others, some are more complicated, but they all follow the same rules. This is just one way of proving that the differential of sine x is indeed cosine x. And this can be shown and graphically as well as algebraically, as shown here, with a little bit of evidence if you wanted to use uh, geometrically. But anyway guys, that's it for this video, um, there aren't any more examples I don't want to go over for this. I'm going to be looking at the cosine x, tan x and uh, the other trigonometric functions later on um, using differential, not using differentiation with first principles, but yes, this, will, uh, this should indeed explain everything. As always, thank you very much, you guys have been a fantastic audience, if there are any questions, queries or anything else comments that you'd like to suggest just put them down below the video you know where the comment section is uh, don't forget to like the video and subscribe if you want to see more and i wish you guys luck with your differentiation this is luke syc here peace out